Thank Jack. I'm a little bit worried about you. Uh, you're, were you were you not as long as you'd like to be, or out of the market a little? This market has got you really scratching your head, right? You know, I I, I don't think anyone entered this year expecting a 20 percent rally at, at mid year. So I think a lot of people are caught a little bit off sides with respect to how how positive the move has been. Uh, I think within that move, it's been very much a valuation driven move rather than the earnings driven move that people are more comfortable talking about. Uh, but for the most part, I've been thinking about being fully invested along the way uh, and looking at some rebalancing as things have, have moved and moved a little bit faster, perhaps, than I would have anticipated. Right. Uh, in, in other words, you, you've seen some things that, uh, that, that maybe haven't happened in a while. You, you make the point that you have to go back to the middle of the 80s since, oh. uh, since you saw uh, public officials Trying, well, you trying know to what? Uh, trying to control exchange rates, shut down the dollar rates. Yeah. Has sort of a reminiscence of the Plaza Conference in terms of, of working through that. Um, thinking so much about the trade deficit and the trade balance, you could substitute perhaps China for what was in Japan, pushing back on Germany as opposed to pushing back on Europe as a whole. But for the most part, from the late 80s through most of the early 2000s, the position in Washington has been let the economy and the market. Let us regulate the economy. Let the market operate within the guidelines of that regulation. Today, you actively want to try, or not you want, governmental officials are more or less more actively saying, this is the outcome I want, and you're not giving it to me. So let me try to drive Are, are you that. making a case that the things are stretched because normal uh, fundamentals aren't at work here? So that there's I would say that people are not experienced with it. And effectively, if you spent 15 or 20 years thinking this is the way more. going to have a bad ending, are you saying? It doesn't have to have a bad ending. I just think people have to get more comfortable operating in a different environment. And so effectively, you can think of, you know, my major was political economy, so, uh -huh. which was a fancy way of saying economics with a, a little overlay of politics. Right now, the overlay of politics seems a little bit more important. Than perhaps thinking about some. Thank of the God that was your major. Is that was that really that really was? That is the well, you're perfect for this job now. It's like people at, at your firm are like, God, Caffrey actually studied this stuff. The you know, political economy. Yeah. You know, smash the glass and bring him out of the and little. You're going to run this. To uh, you're going to run J.P. Morgan private bank. I, I, a thing, huh? That's very kind of you and very unlikely. Okay. <laughs> All right. Leah at Westwood Houston. What what uh, what are what are you saying at this point? Yeah, it's been an interesting year this year. Um, I disagree, though. I don't think valuations are overly extended at this point. Um, if you look at the number of stocks that are trading at least one standard deviation above their historical norm, it's only 10 percent of the universe. And um, to give some sort of historical context, uh, back in the dot-com bust, it was, um, or right before the dot-com bust, it was about 60 percent of companies. And uh, before the financial crisis, it was about 50 percent of companies. So um, I do think this earnings season is going to be critical. You definitely have uh, a lot of negative um, global macroeconomic uh, headlines, without question. But so far, you've seen um, companies that have any exposure to the consumer doing fairly well. So if you look at the big banks that have reported, anybody who has exposure to consumer lending has done quite well. And if you look at United, a lot of their upside came from um, consumer discretionary spending. So we're really focused on what the tech, comp uh, the tech companies are going to do. Uh, tech has led the rally over the last several years. Um, they've had a huge discrepancy in performance versus the rest of the market. And year over year, earnings are, um, should decline for the tech companies. So it'll be interesting to see how they react to earnings. Whenever we have uh, Richard Fisher on, he always, you know, we say, well, of course Texas is doing well. You got all, those, all that oil and gas. He goes, that's not it. Uh, that there's all, a lot of other things that, uh, in Texas, that, you know, tort for all these things that, that he brings up that make it a great place to do business. Are you a little bit skewed because usually things in Texas are, are, are not quite recession resistant, obviously, if, the, uh, if oil goes down, but, but it's a pretty solid place to do business. And you, I think you, your whole career has been down there, right? Texas A&M, Rice, et cetera. Um, that's correct. I've spent um, the vast majority of my career in Texas, and it has been a great place to be. We've had a huge population shift uh, down, to, uh, down to Texas, but uh, Westwood is a very global company. We actually have a, um, an office up in Toronto that uh, follows international and emerging market um, strategies for us and an office in Boston that does global converts for us. So as a team, we certainly uh, share economic data. Um, but you're but, right, Texas is a great place. Yeah, and, you, and one of your stocks is Conoco, so you're not really, uh, it's not just technology. Also, like consumer staples, um, 
at technology you're increasingly concerned or, or I mean, it has, what did we find out yesterday? Four stocks account for 20% of the gains in the S&P this year, the, the, uh, the, you know, the well-known names. Yeah, it's been ex Go ahead. It's been it's been extremely narrow market, um, as you mentioned. We we do like Conoco, and it's been a recent name that we've purchased, um, in particular looking at valuations. So if you look at the second quarter, it's the only sector that is uh, is down for the year. Um, so we think on a valuation basis, it's attractive. Um, the oil field services area has been really tough on a pricing basis, and Conoco is fairly defensive and has a great balance sheet. Um, we also like looking, as you mentioned, at consumer staples. We like Nestle like, uh, quite a bit. Um, it, they're accelerating their top line. They have a, a new CEO that came in in um, 2017. They uh, sold their U.S. Um, confectionery business and have been growing more in, uh, in organics. And then another company that we really like a lot is Capgemini. Um, we think Europe is quite interesting, and we took some money out of um, out of uh, U.S. equities and put them in the international markets earlier this year. Um, Europe is facing mm -hmm. a lot of challenges, okay. but has been facing a lot of challenges, and valuations are lower there. Right, so, Jack, you're not really buying and holding your nose as you're buying it, exactly, but it, is there a level on the S&P where you'd say, all right, this is just too much for you me? You know, I think when you start talking about 18, 19 times earnings that you've actually... Where's that, 3,200? Uh, we're at 17 today, so call it up another 7 to... 13 percent, you know, 7 yeah. percent would start getting, I think, fair. There's an old guideline, you know, inflation plus trailing P.E. equals 20. Yeah. That's sort of a rule of thumb for a trader. And at a market level, different companies, different growth rates, different balance sheets, you're going to work around that. Um, and you certainly have a, a reasonable chunk of the market that is trading quite cheap, effectively saying there is no expansion or the expansion will get cut off fairly soon. Um, but, you know, up 15 per, uh, mid teens percent from here, I think, yeah, you've gone too far too fast and, and life gets messier. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, thank you both. I'm just looking at Stanley Black and Decker because they mentioned something about tariffs. $110 million of tariff, commodity, and currency headwinds in the second quarter. They just reported. We'll take a closer look. I'm not, I'm not sure whether they beat it or not. But I just saw that line about tariffs. We're all waiting. You know, we got our. You know, antenna up. up for tariff uh, tariff issues. I mean, earnings are kind of flat, right? Uh, but after some great gains last year, though, that's the thing. Comps are tough. Earnings are tracking a little bit better than forecast at this better point. Than you know, about a four percent gain. But when you start thinking, you can tell the issue is where you what you, what you want to exclude. So it used to be X financials, then X energy. Today it's X technology. Well, we'll see after this week with 130 companies reporting.